What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nigeria Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, a reaction to the Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Brian, I saw it. It's more the same for me. Although I am inter interested in seeing Adam Warlock. Mm -hmm. Only one shot um, of him, I thought. Like only one actual facial shot of him. Yes, like, yes, yes, yes. There was there was like two two action sequences. One he's punching, I think, uh Gamora's sister, I forget her name, Nebula. Nebula. And then and then it shows his face. I'm interested in seeing that. I'm the, that's the only thing I, I'm not interested in listening to Drax make jokes and uh, None of the jokes hit for me, obviously, Brian, because you know already I'm not into his humor that much. Um, I'm interested in seeing Rocket Raccoons, the the high evolution. I'm mean, there. There's certain things that I'm interested in seeing, but this trailer didn't do anything for me to go crazy about. But I am into. The whole I am Groot thing is like, oh, we are Groot. They got to do that again. They got to put it in the trailer. Why can't you save that? But your reaction, Brian, to the trailer, what did you think? What are you excited for? I think I'm, I am excited in the sense that we are being promised that this is an, an end of sorts for this group. It's not being written as much with the idea that it leads to Guardians 4 or Guardians 5. This is, I mean, as we know, contractually, this is James Gunn's swan song in the MCU. I thought the trailer did a nice job actually of kind of playing up the emotion of of what we might see a little more than we've seen in the prior you know outings for this crew so i i hope that's not a a bait and switch i hope that this has a little i think i think this is a team where to your point they leaned in enough on the jokes and the humor and the comedy to where like there's plenty of levity i think you can add a little more depth add a little more you know catharsis and emotion and actually maybe come up with something um pretty pretty resonant I mean, in fairness like guardians one had some of that i mean that opening scene you know as a starting point for quill with his mom passing away and like you know there's some there's some yeah, i went back it's when i watched that recently with my daughter and like that was i forgot kind of like oh yeah this actually started more a little more seriously than i remember like i, I remember the yeah. jokes i remember some of the gags when they were fresh but but then yeah rocket i think is actually maybe could be the the, the one of the stars here like if we kind of dig into his his history and his background and we get past his wise cracking kind of cynical nature um although i love i love every scene that he's been in yeah no he's good at it like he's actually the, the bradley cooper voicing and the way it's written it, it it generally works as sort of this brusque kind of you know um very coarse character but he's shown these soft moments i remember like in infinity war when groot disappears rocket's mm -hmm. reaction for a cgi character is like very emotional genuine it's, it, you feel the emotion and, of him watching his favorite tree friend disappear dave batista's kind of with you like he obviously has lamented the way this character has been played and i think he's doing his job but i think you're right it's be and i you know i'll i'll just tie in very briefly the holiday special here i don't know if you've watched it i have no i have um, not but drax and mantis are kind of the stars of that and they they go on a they want to give Peter Quill a Christmas present because they think he's depressed. And so they go to Earth to kidnap the real Kevin Bacon, Kevin Bacon. He's playing himself. But so Drax is dialed up to 11 on the jokes and the like nonsensical gags. And like he's obsessed with like, you know, Christmas inflatables. And like it, I could see where Batista was like, this probably is not what I thought I was signing up for when i when i agreed to get tattooed up and painted to, to do this role so uh i'm kind of with you there i am i'm intrigued because the trailer didn't play up the gamora angle but i am intrigued to see how quill reconnects up. with the alternate version of gamora like that i assume has to be fleshed out in full and paid off in this movie but it's not really yeah. spoken about and then you reference it uh the the, the 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 new villain and then adam warlock and what he actually is in this movie is he villain is he friend is he both like th that definitely are the, the the real selling points of of this film which i'm sure will be critically acclaimed i'm a little less in a weird way i wonder if this is actually going to be well received because marvel's fallen off in some areas with some of their other films and the and the least the quality of this has been pretty steady even if it is kind of the same so I wonder if that's actually going to play better next year because the other stuff has been a bit more disappointing. 
when, when it comes to Adam Warlock, Brian, my concern is I hope this is not a one and done situation. Yeah. And it's not because he's sort of like vision in a sense, the white vision. Well, yeah, I'm also curious, does you know, does this iteration of Adam Warlock, how true is it to the the scope of Adam Warlock in the comics, right? His connections to Thanos or death or like characters we haven't seen, but like a world of beings that's so divine and almost like uber powerful beyond what like what the Guardians would ever possibly be. I, I'm a little skeptical that they can really pay true homage to that, but I'm hoping they don't power him down so much that he basically is just like a golden guardian if that makes sense that that doesn't seem fair to the power of the character yeah that is my concern brian that is my concern about adam warlock to me he was dope um in the infinity gauntlet storyline uh i don't know what the future of this it certainly has he has a storylines. I don't know how far they're going to go with it. Is it almost in the same bucket as do you want to see an Adam Warlock movie? Do you? It's, it's sort of the same question I asked about the Submariner. Do you want to see a Submariner movie? There's a lot of characters, Brian, that are dope, but don't need their own movie. Yeah. Ant Man 3, Brian. We you sent me what was this? This is this is a trailer from oh, is, the Brazil. Yeah. yeah, so Brazil Comic Con is going. That's why we're getting all these. There's a lot of footage out there, courtesy of Disney and Marvel. There's Indiana Jones five. There's a lot of stuff that's that's come out in the last 24 hours. And so the Ant Man one was kind of like a a history of Ant Man leading into like a a fresh teaser for Quantum Mania. So we got a little new footage in there. They did a good job of. Making Ant Man be like, yo, if it wasn't for Ant Man, this they did a hell of a job, Brian. Continue. No, you're right. His, uh, <laughs> his, 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 it's like House of Highlights Real was pretty strong. <laughs> he plays, he can make a, a good case for this guy being the guy that if it wasn't for him, this would have never worked out. But go ahead. Yeah. So I read into that a little bit because we know that he effectively winds up having to work for Kang. And so I was like, this thing feels like a setup of like, he's the savior to save the world. And now he's going to endanger the world. That's what it felt like. But this is still to me all about Jonathan majors. What am I missing here? Like every time the guy opens his mouth and we get, we get a little bit more of a, the voice that we got in the teaser, we hear it, like how it's being, it's a very like stilted, low, you're out of your league, Ant-Man. Ant-Man. That's such a good, just a great villainous line. I'm like, I, I I eat it up. I'm just like, this This is just a showcase, I think, for him to cook. I I, I just can't see this movie being bad with if he's going to turn it loose. And the teaser hooks are doing a good job because he's making reference in this uh, teaser to, I already know how it ends. Like he says it in the tree. He's like, I already know how this ends. Yeah. And that's what makes this character so powerful and so interesting is like, to your point, if he already knows how it ends, why does he need Ant-Man for anything? Exactly. That was, a, that, I asked that question. When did I ask that question? A, a, a long time ago, I believe I asked way that back question. When. Yeah, like way back when. When, it, when basically when it, I think when, it, when the, when it leaked that, when it when the storyline leaked the idea that like cassie's going to be hostage in order for kang to force ant-man to do something for him which yeah, implied yeah, he yeah. he was not powerful enough to do it himself we said this before quantum mania is a huge film i've been saying this ever since it was announced i've been saying that this movie is going to be huge brian do you think it has a possibility because we we've been on a MCU has been on a on a streak of not hitting that billion dollar mark <laughs> on movies we thought it would do a yeah. billion dollars easily. Now the conversation, as you probably already know, that we don't probably talk about that that much because it's not really relevant anymore. You know, unless you know, 
Jonathan Majors, and based on the stuff that we've talked about, this is Ant Man is is an OG. He's not a new character. He's part of the old regime, right? In terms of the the movies that. I think Brian, and without question, if Chala, if, if Chadwick would have been around for this movie, no question, a billion dollars, no question. I still can't believe it's not going to get there. I, I know. I, like, I think that's a. I think if I was Marvel and Disney, I'd be like, "What happened here?" Because this movie was more than good enough. Can Quantum Mania be the the first to to get us out of this rut that we've been in? <laughs> I'm gonna say no. I mean, I think I just. I don't I think that bar has just gotten to a point where Marvel needs to reinvent to get over it and as good as I think this movie can be for people like us I just don't think there's enough here to really galvanize people to to get the repeat business to that it's going to need to get there uh, so I'm kind of more in the 800 million dollar camp for that which is like that that's a big turn up from this was a yeah, yeah, yeah. 100 500 million dollar nice profitable smaller franchise for Ant-Man 1. Yeah. So it's in the lead off spot for phase 5 with Kang's feature film debut. That's a big deal. So 800 million would be a huge step up and I think Disney would be very happy with that. But I I just after what we've seen this year I I'd be surprised. And I and I have to float this out there because as improbable as it may seem, it may become a factor. If Avatar 2 does James Cameron things, that movie's still going to be rolling in February. If you, if you buy into the history of Avatar and Titanic and the way James Cameron movies have tended to play, and people are saying, that, and the estimates I've seen for the opening weekend for Avatar 2 are already like $175 million, which would be more than twice Avatar 1. And it's getting a full release in China, the only movie that it has this year. James Cameron movies have legs, and it's the mm-hmm. same audience. I, I just if that movie's still doing like twenty five million a week when Ant Man three comes out, like that's gonna take some money away from them. So I just float it. It I would have you would have thought they'd be safe. They're like two months clear, but. I don't know, just getting that inkling that this might somehow be a phenomenon again against all odds, and I don't know. There's going to be a lot of players taking out their girls. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. James Cameron movies are, are pretty good date movies. Yeah, man. Long, His movies, good date movies. Yeah, Titanic. Come on, man. I, you know how many times I've seen Titanic in the, <laughs> in the theaters? Um, and it's because it's not because I love the movie. I thought the movie was fantastic, but hey, you know, back in the day, anyway, <laughs> you can't count them out. But Quantum Mania, I think, is is something I f- I feel like is uh, people are especially MCU fans, and there are many who are a getting feeling the fatigue and are looking for something great. And again, because Ant Man is an OG. Uh, his story is is n- is not unknown to us. I think the other thing I, I got to be honest, I think Ant Man three will battle against. Like I said, is this has been a year where Marvel's come under fire for its visuals, and that you know. So I think Marvel's also come under fire for some of its storytelling, some of its character choices. So that's not Ant Man 3's fault, but I do think it starts from a position that. I don't think Dr. Strange 2, for example, started from, which is like, it has to overcome a little bit of doubt. And so I almost feel like for Ant-Man 3 to have any shot at a billion dollars, it'll be more weekends 2, 3, and 4. If the movie comes out and the reviews are great and people go to see it and that first weekend is good, but then it's like people come out of the theater and they're like, yo, Marvel's back. Like, you got to go see this movie. That's how you could get it to a billion dollars. And I'm just like... I don't know. I'm just not convinced that I'm, I, and I'm in the camp of like Marvel visuals have kind of gotten to the point where I'm like, I don't trust a CGI heavy movie as this is to really blow me away. Like I trust James Cameron to blow me away with his underwater visuals in Avatar 2. I don't necessarily trust how this is going to look. I trust Jonathan Major, yeah. but I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily trust the rest of the, 
you know, the rest of it, and all due respect to Jonathan Majors, who I think, you know, we're going to look back on this 10 years from now and he's probably going to have an Oscar in his, you know, on his mantle. Oh, yeah. That's where he's headed. Yeah. But like, it's almost one of those things where it's like, if it was Denzel as Kang, like 10 years ago or 15 years ago at the height of his powers, like Majors name is not at that level yet. If that makes sense as a bankable name on his no. own, even though you and I know he's great. And people who watch Lovecraft Country know he's great. He's getting there, but he's not there yet. That's why I feel like it. That's it's not enough built in. Like the star power is still Rudd. Like he's probably the best known name on the cash sheet. Paul Rudd is a famous dude. Like mm-hmm. as me for a lot of people, right? Like Michael Douglas is a legend. Michelle Pfeiffer is a legend, but they're in the twilight. Like for this generation, yeah, yeah, yeah. they don't remember their peak as well. Jonathan Major's career after this is going to be he's going to be a busy guy i think he's a busy guy now well i mean um, 23 though i mean if he, if he hits it on the if he if he hits it out of the park with this and he hits it out of the park with creed 3 like i mean yeah there's a no brain after that <laughs> yeah it's it's no, no ceiling brain after that yeah there's no yeah. ceiling hemsworth we thought cuz there was a there was a, an article written Brian that his reaction towards the ending of Thor Love and Thunder when it said Thor will be back or whatever, right? He was like, really? That was his response. It was like, he was he was like, really? And now he has seemed to, because of, I don't know if you watched Limitless, but I'm sure you've heard yeah. of the article of, of, of what's going on with him. Uh, so he's certainly taking a, a different outlook on life and uh and how he spends his time and he wants to do some meaningful things i think because of the reaction it has gotten he sort of understands that we can't do any more of these anymore like this and so he's saying Thor has to be drastically changed from what we've done Ryan, to that I say, I think you got too gassed on people telling you about your comedic timing that you overdid it. And now look what you've done. Your thoughts, Brian? I didn't love these comments. Uh, Mm -hmm. I'll try to... And, and to your point, the thing on Limitless, Chris Hemsworth discovered he has a condition that's very rare and could be problematic for his health. And so he's taking a long break from acting entirely as a result mm-hmm. of that. So it's not just a Thor thing. It's 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 an everything thing. Yeah. Um, now, he has some movies in the can, right? He's, he has the Hulk Hogan biopic. He has Extraction 2. So he's got some things that, like, we're going to get. We're going to see him in new roles, but they've already been they've already been shot. Um, um but before we move on hulk uh the hulk hogan story i think is his oscar bid go ahead <laughs> you said that before you were on that you were on that train so to your point his quote i don't on thor five i don't know if i'm even invited back but if i was i think it would have to be a drastically different version in tone everything just for my own sanity end quote well, you and I agree, true, like no argument. Yeah. But where I have a problem is like you were the architect of this. Like yeah. in Thor one and two, you were the newbie. Nobody knew who Chris Hemsworth was. So I understand. Like you come in, this is a big star making role for you. You take your direction, you look at Thor the Dark World, and you're kind of like, I don't this this isn't great like what, what's going on here i understand that part of it but yeah by the time you got to ragnarok and love and thunder you were a star taika waititi that's your guy so you went to kevin feige and it's like this is what we're going to do we're going to take the franchise in this direction ragnarok huge hit huge critical hit you and i in the minority on this one don't love it as much but it it's pretty widely acclaimed but even the most devout fans of Ragnarok 
generally have agreed love and thunder was a step back mm -hmm. because it leaned into the silly it leaned into the goofy it leaned into things that we didn't need more of at the expense of things that had potential like gore the god butcher like doing more with the actual mighty thor storyline like some of the visuals which actually were pretty good in that movie yeah so when thor when chris Hemsworth says that stuff he's you gotta he's gotta point the finger at himself because yeah he's the number one reason why they doubled down and tripled down and quadrupled down on you know comic thor and kind of blubbering stuttering speech making thor and all the things that I don't know, worked in small doses, but as you have remarked on many times before, Marvel just goes way overboard when they get their hands on these things, whether it's, you know, the tone of Guardians, whether it's, you know, the Hulk, whether, like, whatever. They always seem to do this and just go, if there's a line, they just blow past it. And Love and Thunder was way past the line of balance between the serious and, and the goofy. Yeah. And so, yeah, like, to me, I read this and I'm like, fine, you want to take a break from acting? For your personal reasons, awesome. And you don't really want to come back to the Thor that you created? Great. Why do we need Thor again? Well, let's just put the character on the shelf. And re and when it's time, somebody else will wield the hammer. We're good, We're good with that. I'm good with that. Listen, if the end is near, then let it be that at the end of Secret Wars or whatever the case may be, uh, but at some point, these characters, Captain America, it doesn't end with Chris Evans. It just doesn't. Tony Stark, perhaps, it doesn't end with Robert Downey Jr. I'm telling you, Brian, after Secret Wars, it's a reboot. We talk a reboot, I think, man. 100%. And it's not just, you know, I, I, I'm going to asterisk Captain America because obviously, you know, Anthony Mackie has the mantle, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about yeah. Steve Rogers. Yeah, yeah, Steve Rogers. Yes, yes. We're yes. about Tony Stark. We're talking. That's who we're talking about. I mean, I don't know why there's like any stigma around that. It's like we have Batman all the time. We have <laughs> Superman. Like this is Spider Man. We just had a movie yeah. with multiple <laughs> Spider Man in, and everyone cheered. So why are we why are we stressing about yeah. having another Steve Rogers and having another Tony Stark and another Thor? Someday. I mean, shoot, I, he doesn't look the same, but I know like uh, there's a uh, it's, it's Jacoby Lordy. He's a young Australian actor who's 25 years old and six foot five. He's just sitting right there. Like, yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. He's got brown hair, but I'm just saying like he's a bit he's a really tall strapping dude. You could easily put on 30, 40 pounds of muscle, pick up a hammer and a costume and he would look the part. I just what, he's, what's his, what's his name? Jacob E. Lordy. He's like a heartthrob actor right now. But like, yeah, I, I just, I know he's from Australia. I know he's 25. I know he's six foot five. He's huge. Yeah. Um, so I was just like, you can do this. It's fine. It's okay. People will be ready for it. Um, but I think like, yeah, like the Thor mythos. And I know like they're, they're starting to get into Hercules or get into like, so you can save it. We don't need it right away. It's okay. Yeah. Like we can, we can work with some other characters. There's other, you know, and, and as you said, like, and I think, you know, we've heard rumors and I think it will be true. Like all these, all these OGs are going to get one last hurrah. It sounds like in secret wars. Absolutely. So that's great. Not do it. Yeah. That's great. Like let them have yeah. it. Everyone will be psyched. We're all going to cheer. And then let's bring it back around and say, you know what? We got a new Steve Rogers, a new Tony Stark, a new, new, all these guys, you know, and it'll be it'll be a reboot like they do in the comics but there's so many stories they didn't tell that's the <laughs> thing right the the mythology of all these characters so many different ways you can go so many directions you can take yeah. uh, oh we forgot uh the obvious one we're waiting on it's you know ruffalo get get him recast <sighs> That one, I don't even. I, I just like glossed it over in my mind, blacked out on that. But yeah, I don't. Yo, it's crazy how when I think about the MCU, I don't even think about the Hulk. And before, it used to be always about the Hulk for me. Well, we're pretty <laughs> soon headed into a world. We're pretty soon apparently headed to a world where our primary MCU Hulk is going to be Harrison Ford as Red Hulk. So that that's where we're at. With we got an eighty-year-old Harrison Ford as Red Hulk as our maybe our the one with the one hulk we're seeing somewhat regularly on screen i don't know but i doubt 
No, we'll see. Jennifer, be... I mean, we'll see. Tat- it'll be Tatiana Maslany for a while. We'll see. Ta- we'll see She Hulk more than we see uh, regular Hulk. I think. But <sighs> just thinking about the Hulk is just like I get like a sick feeling inside. I think about the Hulk, man, and what they've done to the Hulk. But Thor, but weirdly, Thor is like, it's in the same zip code because yeah. the yeah. silliness of with the, with which they went with the character in three, and then really went in in parts of four. I think when we do get the the inevitable reboot and the recast, I definitely think you're going to hear a lot of, "We're going to be more grounded. We're going to be more gritty. We're going to be more." Si-. How can you not? Right, like, isn't this like where we're at with like some of these characters, like uh, Hulk and Thor? And I'm going to invoke this, and people are going to be like, "This is not a fair comparison." But I'm like, just totally think about it for a second. Is this that much different than where we were post Batman and Robin? Like, really? Yeah. Because Batman and Robin is what led to Batman Begins, because the studio looked at how goofy the Schumacher franchise went, and then it became a commercial bomb or a disappointment. And they said, we got to take Batman back to scratch and back to roots. Yeah. Chris Nolan yeah. came in and said, I got that story. Yeah. <laughs> and we got yeah. it. Yeah. I, that, that to me is where Thor and the whole, and have, it's going to happen. They're gonna, it's going to rebound and revert to serious grounded storytelling for some of these characters. Before we wrap up, Brian, I have to ask you this question. Um, <clears throat> What do you think causes people in the room to say, yeah, let's do more of that? Goofy, silly, funny, more of that, I think, so that we can get the crowd. Well, because obviously it is a repeating pattern, Brian. I think there definitely is a put, like if you look at the demographics of the Marvel audience and the MCU audience, it is getting older because the universe has been around now for 15 years. So I think on one hand, Disney definitely wants to cater more to the younger crowd. But weirdly, I feel like with some of these shows and films, like the, some of the goofy and the comedy actually is, I don't think is like really young kid. I don't think it's like either young kid appropriate or like it goes right over their heads, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So like, I'm kind of feeling like it's not fitting what I think is one of the missions right now um, that I think we're really going to see with it when the X, when the mutants, when the mutants finally show up, I think you're really going to see it in earnest. This like, we're going to play to the young crowd and have younger characters and teen characters and 20 something characters. But I, that's the thing. Like I think back to like Thor, love and thunder. And I, I, I said, I've been going through the universe with my daughter who's eight or just about to be eight and she's doing great with it. But like, I go through the catalog of like what I want to show her, what I can show, what I think I can show her. And like, like Love and Thunder is not really on that list for me. Like, I don't, that's not a film that I would like go and be like, and think that A, she would get, B, she would like appreciate or C, really enjoy. Um, whereas like, weirdly, like Thor 1, she actually does enjoy. Um, like, it's a little simpler. Like the jokes are a little, a little more basic or like, you know, she gets her chuckles from Loki. She loves Tom Hiddleston. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. The short answer to your question is I don't know because I, I don't feel like the, the comedy they're coming up with, I'm not really sure who it's aimed at or really landing with. And I certainly don't think it's with the real target audience they want to grow. So, Yeah, because there's an issue, man. This, that's definitely an issue. They they, they have to get... I, I don't know who's in there laughing at some of this stuff because it's, it's, it's not funny. Um. So one thing, just quickly before we... I know we're close to wrapping up here, but I was again surprised, and I'm st- maybe I'm late because I know we're recording this pretty soon after Brazil Comic Con, but nothing from the Marvels. Like I, I was a little bit surprised that we didn't get like a full on trailer for that movie because it's like we're, we're promoting the other two films in 2023, and we got this big question mark in the middle. I was surprised. Let's see, Brian. It is weird that it didn't show the Mar- uh, the Marvels anything in the. I I don't know if they're confident on that sh- that 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 sh- that um movie, Brian. Uh, I'm certainly not looking forward to it. Um, but if Blue Marvel is in it, I'll be excited for that. But at the same time, concerned. 
Um, and hopefully it does, and I'm hopeful that it, it doesn't turn out into a bishop character like they did with um X-Men uh, Days of Future Past. Remember Bishop? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's forgotten. I'm like, who the hell was that? And they've done nothing with it. Uh, I hope hopefully his character doesn't turn out because his 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 story is very, very interesting and unique. And hopefully we can explore that. But yeah, that's oh quick Brian, quick reaction. I am always looking forward to see it, what adventure Indiana Jones is in. Oh, yeah, sure. So this, although it seems a bit weird, I'm interested in seeing where this and how this ends. Because this is the final go the around. Really so. final, the really yeah, final. Yeah, yeah. We no, it, it looks very true to the spirit of the movies. Like the couple chase sequences we got look very reminiscent of Raiders or Last Crusade, which I think is what you should be aiming for. Yeah. I think Phoebe Waller Bridge is playing his niece. Is that I think that's what I understand. So okay. um we haven't seen her much since Fleabag, you know, kind of went viral. So excited to see that. Um but yeah, no, I mean, at the end of the day, like, you know, even if Harrison Ford is 80, like, this is the role he was born to play. It's the role he enjoys the most. And yeah, sure, I'd, I'll be there. I'll be there opening weekend. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And uh, Brian, Transformer Beast uh, trailer. What did you think? Listen, I, I like... It looks that. interesting. I like... Here's what I like. I like that now that Michael Bay is not involved, and I am a Michael Bay fan, generally speaking, but... I feel like he he did this franchise dirty in terms of how he made these things look in the movies. Forget the storytelling. Mm -hmm. But ever since Travis Knight shot that uh, those scenes on Cybertron in Bumblebee, and I was like, see, they look like the Transformers that I know from Generation <laughs> 1. And so I was excited that in this trailer, whether it's Optimus, RC, I wasn't a Beast Wars came after I was really kind of like yeah I wasn't into big, Beast Wars but like Optimus Primal looks like Optimus Primal like they those characters look like the toys they look like the Generation One or like soon after characters like RC looks like RC like I, I so but yeah and so that made me somewhat excited I was like yeah. these Transformers look like the Transformers we grew up characters yeah so yeah that's what I'm looking forward to seeing uh it looked pretty cool so hey i listen i like the the last bumblebee movie and i'm up for a good transformer movie i'm not up for 20 transformer movies <laughs> <laughs> but i'm looking for a good set of of good transformer movies and and then that's it you know yeah i agree um yeah let us know in the conversation below what you guys thought of uh uh Guardians of the Galaxy 3 um, trailer, Ant-Man 3, um, new scenes from that. Um, your reaction towards uh, the, the Indiana um, Jones uh, number five, the last one. Uh, that's going to be interesting. I'm looking forward to seeing that one, Brian. Um, and Transformers Beast trailers. That looks interesting. That looks interesting. Let us know in the comments section below what you guys think of those uh trailers we'll see you next time on the nigeria report